Yeah, we back. Now, listen, man, intelligent black men need to make our own political party. Now, I know it's never going to actually, you know, make any any breakthroughs. We're never really going to, you know, assume office because the amount of intelligent black men is just, you know, we're, we're like a small little faction. You know, we, we probably barely register on the radar because, you know, when I look around, but I, I don't understand to, to the right, to the left. The intelligent black men, please stand up. Now, anyways, today we're going to be talking about um, the Ice Cube sit down with Tucker Carlson. And he said something that was interesting to me. You know, Ice Cube began a lot of flack over the past couple years, which I think I think some people be going too hard on Ice Cube. But yeah, Ice Cube been flirting. He's been flirting with the with the Republican side of the political spectrum. You know, in typical black Republican fashion, uh, Ice Cube said, you know, race don't exist. Race don't matter. You know, race is fake. You know, we all God's children. We all the same. We all together. We we holding hands. Kumbaya, my Lord. You know, anyways, I'm gonna jump into the footage and I'm gonna come back on my commentary. Let's go. We've been talking almost all day now. You haven't mentioned race a single time. We've mentioned economics, rich and poor, a number of times. Do you think that we overplay the role of racial conflict in American life? Yes. I think race, it, it takes up too much space. Um, there's people that we all have in our lives who are same race that we can't stand. And there's people in our lives from other races that we get along with way better. So it's not about race. It's not about color and gender and this and that. It's about who do you connect with? You know, who do you vibrate with? You know what I mean? I Who's do. on the same wavelength? Who wants to be the same kind of person? Who wants to do the right thing when you want to do the right thing? Um, that's who you connect with. So I think a lot of people get make a lot of money off of the racists fighting against each other and bickering. And they the ones who push it in our face all the time that we're separate. And um it does feel like there's more of that, doesn't there? Yeah. It's we back now listen i do agree with one thing that he said when ice cube touched on the fact that there are people that monetize these these internal conflicts amongst these different factions different groups different races the same thing happens on the political spectrum he could have mentioned that there are many political commentators you know such as tucker carlson who monetizes and capitalizes off the different political factions the different political differences in the united states right so in a nation built on capitalism everybody is going to monetize anything right people have monetized uh, bottled water so i mean listen we're in, we're in a capitalist country so that's that's normal people gonna capitalize any goddamn thing bro but what i don't what i don't like is this i've heard the same song and dance from black republicans for as long as i can remember for as long as i've been alive race don't exist race don't exist it's not about race it's not about race i don't, I don't see race bro i've heard the same song and dance bro i mean goddamn, come with an come with another record but what i don't like is this ice cube is saying this now of course you already know White folks hear black Republicans talk like this and they be like, oh man, that's an intelligent black man right there. But what people don't understand is this philosophy is not something brand new, right? Black men, black men have had this mentality since the beginning of time. Black men have never really had a had a race consciousness ever in history. Black men have always understood that, you know, I rock, I rock with my tribe. I rock with my group. In fact, Republicans love to always say, oh, the Africans sold your own people. You sold your own people into slavery. You sold your own people to African tribal chiefs, the African kings. They sold their people into slavery. The same the same Republicans, right, that will tell you race don't exist. Race don't exist. Well, guess what? Them African kings that they talk about, they didn't see race. Race didn't exist. Their, their mentality was the same mentality as Ice Cube. I don't see race. I rock with who I rock with, you know? If I want to rock with the Dutch and the Portuguese, you know, I'm vibing with the Dutch and the Portuguese. You know what I mean? I, I don't rock with them black motherfuckers over there because race don't exist, you know? Ice Cube said, you vibe, you vibe with who you vibe with. So the African kings... They was just vibrating with who they vibrated with, right? They was vibe, they was vibing with the Portuguese. They was vibing with the French. They was vibing with, you know what I mean? So this mentality amongst black men is nothing new. Black men have never had a race consciousness until we were forced to by external circumstances because the Europeans had a race consciousness. And because of that, they enacted political, economic, and military measures to enforce their race consciousness. And because of that, black men had to react and adopt a race consciousness that was foreign to us because we didn't have that. 
back in our homelands. We didn't have that before colonialism. We, we never had a, a race consciousness until we were forced to, right? Until we were forced to by external, by external measures. And that's the one thing I do not like about, you know, the black Republicans. They want to preach how race don't exist, race don't exist. And then they want to rebuke our ancestors for following in that same philosophy, right? Our ancestors, you know, they talk about the Africans sold their own people into slavery when that wasn't the case. Africans sold other nations and other, other kingdoms, other rival nations into slavery. But they rebuke us for not having a race consciousness back during the colonial period, right? They rebuke our ancestors. You sold your own people. No, that was not their own people because they did not see race. So that was not their own people they sold into slavery. So they rebuke you for not having a race consciousness. And then they try to preach to you how you shouldn't in the present day have a race consciousness. But it was due to the lack of your race consciousness. That's the reason you are in the position that you are today because you didn't have a race consciousness when it mattered the most. How do you think the Berlin Conference happened? Because black men on the west coast of Africa, on the east coast of Africa, on the, on the south coast of Africa, they, on the north coast of Africa, they didn't have a race consciousness. So they fell victim to Europeans who did have a race consciousness. So as intelligent black men who understand history and where we are today, then you should understand the fact that you need to adopt a race consciousness to adapt to the present day, to the present political landscape of today's world. The reason why Africans fell victim to the Europeans was due to their disunity because they did not have a race consciousness. They looked at the black man next to them and he did not see a brother. He seen a potential adversary and he seen the European and he seen a potential ally. And it was due to that disunity, the European was able to fill that gap and sow dissension and, and conquer the whole continent because of the lack of a race consciousness. So don't come and tell me at your big age with gray in your beard you old motherfucker to tell me as a young black oh race don't exist yeah you know race you know we just vibe with who we vibe with nigga you sound like a motherfucking african chief in 1755 oh yeah you know i don't see race you know i, I, I vibe with the dutch you know I'm, I'm vibing with the french i'm getting money with the, i'm getting money with the british that's what you sound like you sound stupid you sound stupid because the gentleman you're talking to tucker carlson his ancestors they did have a race consciousness and they built their empire off that race consciousness and he reaps the benefits off their ancestors having a race consciousness and you ice cube as a black man your people are in the economic and political position they are today because their ancestors did not have a race consciousness so don't come and try to preach that same song and dance about how race don't matter race don't exist black men been saying that since since the beginning of time and that shit was the reason we lost everything now, since you dumb motherfuckers want to talk about race consciousness, let's talk about the Berlin Conference. You know, let's talk about a group of a group of white men who did have race consciousness and how how it reaped economic and political benefits still to this day that they're still enjoying. Now, as we already know, the Berlin Conference was a meeting held sometime in 1884 among the major European powers to divide and colonize Africa during the scramble for Africa. The primary aim of the conference was to prevent conflicts between European nations, right? Towards the end of the 1800s, white men sat down at the table together like bosses like men like brothers and was like listen li listen fellas we've been fighting going back and forth for like a thousand years man listen the french the british the spanish the, or the portuguese we've been go we've been going at it man on land on sea we've been going crazy but listen brothers we got to sit down at the table together even though we are all different you're french you're british you're portuguese whatever we all we all different right but listen we all have mutual economic and political interests we are all white men at the end of the day regardless of our different nationalities we are all white men and we have we have similar interests so we need to we need to advance our mutual interests and minimize our infighting because our infighting is going to weaken us and if we are weakened then the africans might be able to push back against us so we need to hold a united front against the africans against the black race against the black men and unfortunately because black men had a similar mentality as ice cube they didn't see race you know race didn't exist you know i vibe with who i vibe with black men never had that conference amongst each other we never had our own Berlin conference with, with a black man from, from West Africa and South Africa and, and, and the Horn of Africa and, and East Africa sat down at the table. It was like, brothers, listen, I know we all different. I know we speak different languages. We dress different. We eat different food. We, we dance to different music. But we have similar economic and political interests. And we need to hold a united front against the incoming European invasion because they about to bulldoze us if we don't come together. Black men, because we didn't see race. Like Ice Cube said, they didn't see race. And because they didn't see race and their adversary, they did see race. They lost everything. The African continent fell like a deck of cards. And we still have not recovered still to this present day. So I'm going to need Republicans to stop talking out both sides of their mouth. On one side, they say... Oh, the Africans sold the Africans into slavery. Okay, so basically what they're saying is they're trying to shame us because our forefathers did not have a race consciousness, but then in the present day, they try to preach to us how you shouldn't have a race consciousness in the first place. That's why That's why I don't understand. Like, you cannot be a critically thinking black man and rock with any of these political parties because it just, yo, anyways, 
Let's get, let's get back into the Berlin Conference, man. Since Ice Cube wants to tell us how, you know, race don't exist, and we just vibe with who we vibe with. Okay, well, that's what the African King said. <laughs> we just vibe with who we vibe with. You know, I don't see race. Anyways, let's get back into it. During the latter half of the 19th century, a significant shift occurred in European attitudes and policies towards Africa. Europeans increasingly adopted a race consciousness and united based on their mutual economic and political interests in conquering and subjugating the African continent as well as its people. Throughout the 19th century, nationalism began to sweep across Europe, promoting a sense of pride and identity within each nation. Colonial expansion became a symbol of national prestige and power. European countries engaged in a race to assert dominance over foreign territories, and Africa became the main battleground for this competition. In fact, the acquisition of African colonies was seen as a measure of a nation's greatness as well as its strength. Also, the 19th century concept of social Darwinism also played a pivotal role in shaping European attitudes towards blacks. This ideology applied that Darwin's theory of natural selection to human societies, suggesting that certain races were more advanced and superior than others. Europeans used this belief to justify their invasion of Africa as a civilization mission to bring progress and development to what they considered lesser races and civilizations. Another crucial factor in Europe's successful colonization of Africa was the lack of unity among African societies. It was because black men during that time, they had the same mentality as Ice Cube. Meanwhile, the Europeans were, were sitting together at the table as men discussing their mutual economic and political interests to come and bombard you and invade you and colonize you and subjugate you to which you have still not economically or politically recovered from still to this day. And they are still reaping the economic and political benefits still to this day. And that's why I'm sick of you rappers, you ball players, you motherfuckers who never went to school, you motherfuckers who never opened a book, speaking on behalf of black men. You don't represent black men. You don't even know the history of black men. Sit your old ass down. And it was because our ancestors, our forefathers, they did not have a race consciousness. They had the same mentality as Ice Cube. I don't see race. That black man next to me, he's not my brother. I feel more connected to the Britishmen and the Frenchmen on the coast. That's why when you study different African societies in the pre-colonial uh, in the pre-colonial era, you notice there were some nations and kingdoms that were more they were more integrated and more connected to the Europeans. It also, it depends on geography as well. Those who are more closer to the coast, they obviously were gonna have first contact with the Europeans and have trading relations with the Europeans. And those who are further inland, they had a more self-sufficient, self-containing you know mentality to protect their sovereignty so it depended on geography and it also depended on mentality they did not see race and it was because of these internal divisions amongst black men who did not see race the europeans took advantage of this division they took advantage of this disunity and they played different groups against each other to further weaken african resistance to colonial conquest so it was our disunity it was the fact that we did not see race Black men back in 1755 was walking around talking like Ice Cube, like a bunch of dumb niggas. Oh yeah, I don't see race. I vibe with who I vibe with. I don't vibe with the African nation over there. I vibe with the Portuguese on the coast. Man, listen, y'all need to shut up, man. Y'all need to be quiet, bro. I'm sick of you rappers and you ball players trying to function as my ambassador, as if you speak for black men. No, you speak for you. You don't speak for the collective of black men. You a fucking rapper. Go back to the studio. Make some more bullshit rap music. I'm tired of you dudes, man. I'm tired of you entertainers, man. The reason why black men are in the position that we are today, globally, geopolitically, is because our forefathers did not have the foresight to see race, to understand the concept of race. They were too, they were too bogged down by, by nationalism. They were too bogged down by their own internal disagreements. They couldn't see the bigger picture. But you know the one instance, the one time in history where black men finally understood the concept of race and were able to unify based on race, regardless of their different national backgrounds, their different tribal backgrounds, the Haitian Revolution. The Haitian Revolution. That was the one time in history where a Yoruba man and a Daome man and an Igbo man and an Ashanti man, and a Hausa man, and a Mandinka man, and a Bambada man, and a Wolof man, and a Temne man, and an Ibibio man, and a Bamikele man, and a Fulani man, etc., etc., were all able to put their bullshit disagreements to the side. Whatever beef they had back home, back on the continent, they said, man, fuck that nigga. It's about race. We black men, man, fuck all that bullshit. We, it's about race. Yo, we go, we going against these Europeans because they coming at us based on race. The French attacking us based on race. The British attacking us based on race. The Spanish attacking us based on race. So whatever we got going on, man, fuck that. It's about race. And we came together as black men. Even in the goddamn Haitian constitution, it said, nigga, we black men. Fuck all that bullshit. We black. Listen, the one time black men understood race, they vanquished every European colonial force during that time. 
And when black men was going around talking like Ice Cube, oh, I don't see race. I vibe with who I vibe with. I vibe. Sometimes I vibe with the Portuguese. Sometimes I vibe with the French. Sometimes I vibe with the British. Guess what? The Europeans used that mentality to their advantage and they took the African continent. And still to this day, we have not recovered geopolitically. So in summary, the concept of race is not something that black men or black people came with. Black people never had a race consciousness. We had a national consciousness. We never had a race consciousness. That was something that we were forced to adopt because of foreign adversaries coming and doing harm to us. So in order to protect ourselves, in order to protect our women, in order to protect our children, in order to establish something for our future generations, we were forced to adopt a race consciousness due to our environment and our surroundings, due to the geopolitical landscape. But that was never something that was natural to us. We had to adapt in order to survive. And when I say this, I'm not saying as a black person, you can't have white friends and you can't, you know, do business with white people. Bro, I never said that. I never said that. I'm just saying that as black men, we have to understand that as black men, we have mutual political and economic interests and we have mutual political and economic adversaries. So regardless of our locations, regardless of our origins, we have a common history. And as the foundation of all our political and economic agendas, we have to understand that yes, race does exist. Race does exist. It's very real. And we have to understand that and stop living with our heads in the clouds. Like at 1725, step into the modern day. Yes, you can have white friends, white associates, whatever, but don't come and lecture me on how race doesn't exist. When number one, black men did not invent the concept of race. Black men were forced to adopt the concept of race in order to survive. Go tell that to your white friend that you're doing an interview with and, and ask him why his ancestors came with the concept of race that we were forced to adopt. Dumb motherfucker. Anyways, it's your boy Nefakari Dessalane back in the billet. Yes, indeed. And I'm gone. Peace. Reincarnated, I'm back in the original fashion. I left on a horse and came back in that ass. And I left with abundance and came at a famine. We used to be pyramids, now we be rapping. Look how the mighty have fallen. Used to be running, now we be walking. When you be cooning, that's when they applaud it. Selling your soul, your sons and your daughter. Gotta come up in this shit. They stuck in the mix. Really, my heart would be breaking. That's why I'm stacking that paper and handle my business. Pass it down in generation. Talking about money and power and building a nation. That's a deadly combination. Never be watching the TV, they pushing the genders. Falsifying information. No, they got malice intentions. Step in the room and I'm feeling attention. Enemy watching me, blocking my vision. Care for the check, cause I need my redemption. Building my kingdom, I need to protect it. Ready for war like a young money Congo. Never decided the team is the motto. Up in the crib and I'm whipping up waffles. Up in the crib and I'm smoking gelato. I'm chilling, I'm taking my pain and make it ambition. I'm blessed by the guys, but I ain't religious. I came for the power, they came for the bitch. They make a no hourly wage. I got business. This shit is an art, and they can never be taught. Selling my soul, I can never be bought. Play all my money, I see you ain't caught. Run to the check and I do it for sport Babylon falling, I go to the source Packing my luggage and go overseas Shorty be with me and she so at least Shorty be charged and I'm calling her Hershey Secret intelligence probably gon' murder me Don't fuck with brands cause nigga I'm Haitian Say the wrong shit and you're smacking their faces